India just pulled off a move that changes the entire space game. For the first time ever, ISRO has handed a rocket over to industry. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, the company known for building fighter jets, will now build and operate ISRO's small satellite launch vehicle. And this isn't just paperwork. This SSLV transfer marks the 100th technology transfer milestone under in space. A clear signal that India's space program is scaling beyond scientists and labs into factories and global markets. The deal was signed in Bengaluru on 10th of September 2025 with ISRO, NSIL, and InSpace, placing the SSLV in HAL's hands. The numbers 511 crore rupees, two years to transfer full know how. And HAL didn't just walk in, it outbid an Adani backed consortium led by Alpha Design. ISRO chairman V. Narayanan promised full training and guidance for HAL. In Space's Pavan Goenka said this move makes India a hub for affordable launch services. And HAL's boss, DK Sunil, declared We will deliver regular, cost competitive launches for the world. End quote. But why now? Well, because India needs a rocket factory. Operation Sindur earlier this year showed exactly why. In May, when terrorists struck Pahalgam, India launched a precise tri services campaign across the line of control. Behind the scenes, ISRO's 58 satellites worked non stop, feeding live imagery and secure comms to the armed forces. Over 400 scientists worked around the clock to keep the network alive. We thank you for your service. Prime Minister Modi has already set the next target. Triple the satellites in orbit within three years. And 70% of those are going to be small satellites. SSLV is tailor-made for that surge. A quick, cheap rocket that can lift half a ton into orbit at very short notice. Union Minister Jitinder Singh put it bluntly. India is already among the top four spacefaring nations with 350 plus startups now building rockets, satellites, propulsion systems, and AI driven space technology. Space, he said, is no longer just about the moon. It's about empowering farmers, students, doctors, cities, and everyday citizens. And here is the wow factor. January this year, ISRO achieved its 100th launch vehicle mission, a perfect success. In July, ISRO and NASA launched NISAR, the world's most advanced Earth imaging satellite to track climate change and disasters. And weeks later, Group Captain Shubhanshu Shukla became the first Indian to visit the International Space Station. He ran 60 experiments. 20 outreach events and called it India's second orbit when he returned. Shukla said, This is the golden period for India in space. Gaganyatri Ajit Krishnan added, In just five years, we have gone to the moon twice, done docking, built a new rocket, and nurtured 350 startups. The world is watching with admiration and envy, end quote. Meanwhile, ISRO's human spaceflight program is already running simulation missions. In July, group captain Angad Pratap and two others spent 10 days locked inside a spacecraft simulator in Bengaluru, carrying out 11 experiments. These GyanX tests are training India's first astronauts for the 2027 Gaganyan launch. And this SSLV transfer is just one part of a larger industrial revolution in space. The government has assigned the prized 89 degree east slot to ATL, 
which is building India's first private ComSat with a 2,500 crore rupees investment, the largest ever private bet in space. A consortium led by Pixel has won the Earth observation constellation, placing a bold zero bid worth over 1,200 crore rupees. Confident they'll make money from data. Startups are already showing results. Pixel has six fireflies in orbit and is preparing, uh, preparing honeybees for deeper spectral imaging. Dhruva Space launched Leap 01 with payloads from Australia aboard a Falcon 9. We have covered this extensively here on front page. Make sure to please check it out if you haven't yet. Digantara is building India's first private observatory in Uttarakhand to track dangerous space debris. And Bellatrix Aerospace is developing air-breathing electric propulsion to make ultra-low Earth orbit practical, cutting latency in half and tripling image resolution. But the most ambitious part is ISRO's roadmap itself. By 2028, India will launch the first module of its very own space station. By 2035, the Bharatiya station will be complete. By 2040, Indian astronauts will land on the moon and return. And ISRO has already unveiled designs for a super heavy lift rocket, 40 stories tall, mind you, powered by 27 methane engines capable of putting 80,000 kilos into orbit. Prime Minister Modi framed it best. Beyond galaxies lies our horizon. By 2047, space will be a cornerstone of India's growth, self-reliance and leadership. End quote. Minister Jitendra Singh says India's space economy will grow from $8 billion today to $40 to $45 billion in the next decade. Here's the payoff. ISRO will now focus on the deep tech moonshots. Chandrayaan, Gaganyaan, Mars, Venus, the space station, and the 40-story rocket. HAL with SSLV becomes India's launch factory. Startups like Pixel, Dhruva, Digantara, and Bellatrix fuel that ecosystem. Together, they create a full-stack space economy where India owns everything from exploration to production. India isn't just catching up. It's actually setting the pace. India has given HAL a rocket. And in just 24 months, it may not be ISRO, but HAL launching satellites for the entire world.